Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, the founder of Alzheimer's Speaks Radio and Alzheimer's Speaks as a whole. Basically, I created Alzheimer's Speaks because my mom had dementia for 30 years, and I personally didn't want anybody going through the pain that I went through as a daughter. I wanted there to be more services and products and tools available to people. So Alzheimer's Speaks is about raising everyone's voice. We are truly an advocacy-based company providing multiple platforms to shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort around the world. And we're also known as a um, media outlet for businesses who are looking to leverage our platforms and content to get to those in need. So if if you are a business looking to enter this industry, please reach out to me. And if you are a family or a professional um, member, there's lots of free contacts on alzheimerspeaks.com. I also always like to thank our audience. You see, because of your loyalty, your commitment, and your, your shares, with, with all of your spheres, your Facebook friends, your Twitter colleagues, your LinkedIn people, all of that has really mattered because you have raised our footprint in the world. And by doing so, by those likes, those clicks, those shares that you don't think mean much, you are really spreading the word that there truly are resources, tools, and products, and organizations and individuals out there ready to help you on this journey. You've also gotten us recognized by Oprah, Maria Shriver, Dr. Oz, and AARP. And you, yes, you could be our next guest because we believe everybody's story needs to be told. So today we're going to talk about some really exciting technology. And I can't wait to introduce our guest here with me today. But before I do that, I always like to give a shout out to a couple organizations. And one is Calendar Cards. You see, Calendar Cards has a memory system that helps people stay independent and be able to manage their daily lives. They have also so kindly made the Memory Cafe directory. And you can find a Memory Cafe anywhere in the U.S. now. And there's over 500 of them. So that's pretty exciting. I also want to shout out to Purple Tables. Purple Tables is a movement to educate our restaurants so that people can go out in community and not feel awkward, feel comfortable, and have their servers meet their needs in a dignified fashion. So let me introduce our guest today. Dr. Jeff Lesner has been developing non-invasive medical equipment to reduce atrophy of the body during times of disuse since 2000. He's the founder and CEO of Vibe Tech Inc., a company in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And Vibe Tech is a NASA spin-off company aimed at restoring physical function and reducing pain in patients recovering from injury and surgery or those that just have a weakness or mobility impairment, which can be caused from a wide range of conditions, as we well know. Jeff is the inventor of Vibtech's core technology involving scientific dosing of vibration therapy. And I don't know if you have heard of vibration therapy, but I haven't heard that much about it. So I'm really excited to talk with them today and learn more. They have issued three pending patents in the U.S. and abroad, see research grants and business awards from federal, state, and local governments, universities, and private foundations. So welcome today, Jeff. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Thank well, you for having me. Well, I'm thrilled to have you on the show because in kind of talking with you and perusing your website, it just looks like a, such an interesting concept. And I'm thrilled that we have some people who are going to be able to talk about this in play and in use in the healthcare field because it's always nice to, to hear from the inventors, but it's nice to hear from real people on the ground what their thoughts are and what they're seeing. So first, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Kaylee Clinton, and she is with Rocky Knoll Health Care Center, and she's the administrator, and she, she's actually been an administrator for seven years in the field. So welcome, Kayla. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day. And Deb Jacoby works as a life enrichment director, and she is also a certified therapeutic recreational specialist, and she has over 38 years experience in the field. So welcome, Deb. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me. 
having me. Well, good. Before we start with our line of questions, um, my audience always likes to know a little bit his, of history about you. And I'm going to start out with Jeff first. And it's a real simple question. But um, Jeff, have you been personally touched by dementia with your circle of family and friends? Well, it's certainly a big and growing problem. Um, I do not have, fortunately, any uh, direct relatives that, that have dementia. Um, but um, with what I've done with um, Kayla and with Deb, um, being able to work with those that um, that do suffer from this, you know, I, I feel so great to be able to assist. Having done some of the dementia training protocols where you get to see and feel what it's like to have dementia, um, I, I just can't even imagine um, how difficult it can be. So anything that anybody can do to assist and recognize this uh, is a big issue that, uh, that we can all chip in and do better to understand it and understand how to work and interact with folks that do have dementia up to enrich their lives. Now, that's something I'm absolutely in support of. Wonderful. Thank you, Jeff. And um, Kayla, I'm going to throw this one to you first. And then Deb, if you don't mind um, sharing if you've been personally touched by dementia. Um, I have been personally touched by dementia. Uh, my grandmother passed away in 2014, um, and she um, was living in a memory care facility in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, so she was very close to me, and um, she did pass away with, with dementia. Okay, great. How, Deb, how about you? I have also, I have had a couple of aunts, actually. One was pretty elderly in her late 80s, who we tried to keep home as long as possible, and ended up in a nursing home facility. Another aunt, we also kept home for quite a while, and then she went from the assisted living situation to a full memory care unit. And currently, my father is still at home, but he is probably in the early stages where I can still handle him at home, but little things that he needs help with along the way so okay well thank you i'm going to throw this uh, first question back to jeff and so jeff um vibe tech has been evolving since 2010 through research and trials and you had your first edition product tested and approved with over 15,000 treatments provided to date now i know you have a second edition a product that's ready for manufacturing how does the therapy system itself work and what makes it possible? Yeah, so this is technology I had originally developed for NASA to help astronauts with atrophy during long duration space flight. So I had to look to see, well, what can we do to help an astronaut who doesn't have gravity? And recognizing that folks here on Earth that aren't as mobile could also benefit from a technology that doesn't require gravity to operate. So let's say you're laid up in bed rest or you've had an injury or surgery and you're uh, going through rehab, you might not be able to stand and run and do all of these activities. So I looked to nature to figure out how our bodies react with the environment to produce some beneficial effect. I developed a technology to actually put the three active ingredients of weight-bearing physical activity back into the body, and I was able to figure out how to control that and dose it and provide people with, um, without putting forth effort, they can actually have those benefits of physical activity. So those three active ingredients are resistance loading. So when you're standing, you have gravity acting on your bones, your muscles, um, your postural muscles have to contract to support your body weight. We have range of motion. If you completely immobilize a joint, that um, all of the tissues will stiffen up. You'll have significant atrophy and your health will decline. Third one was the less intuitive one. This is therapeutic vibration. Vibrations are occurring every time we contract our muscles. So your brain sending a signal to the muscles, but it's pulsing that signal. And our body has developed a strange reflex yes. contract when that um, vibration signal is felt. So every time that we run and walk, our feet hit the ground and there's impact vibration and our muscles contract to counteract that vibration so that our nerves don't just jiggle and stretch and pull to the point that they become damaged. So we've actually developed this stretch reflex. When I built my first prototype, I did not recognize that the stretch reflex existed. So I just took myself up to this little 
contraption that applied some loading and vibration to my lower leg. And I said, okay, well, you know, it'll take a good year for my bones to you know, be able to remodel to a stronger state in response to the stimulus. Um, let me just see how comfortable it is for 10 minutes. And at the end of that 10 minutes, I took the machine off, I tried to stand up, and I couldn't. My leg muscles had worked themselves out so well, there was complete muscle fatigue. And I said, huh, if I can work the body out without exercise, without effort, everybody on earth can benefit from this. And that kind of set me off on the trajectory. So now you'd mentioned we're on our second generation product. So we've got patents issued throughout the US and abroad. So 13 in total uh, um, with all of that. So it's, uh, it's a pretty impressive set of things that protect the device, different ways of using it, all sorts of different applications, some of the control software. But ultimately, what it looks like is a chair that you sit down in. It's got a swivel seat for easy access from a wheelchair. It has a foot plate that you're able to rest your feet on. That foot plate moves back and forth, and it can do it under its own control. Or if the user is able to put forth effort, they can control that foot plate motion. That foot plate is also delivering vibrations to the body. So as you're doing leg presses or having the machine really do passive range of motion, working your legs back and forth, you're also getting these therapeutic vibrations that are contracting the muscle. A session lasts 10 minutes, and there are a number of reasons for that, but um, in 10 minutes time, we're able to safely dose and deliver um, a treatment to a patient, and we're able to instantly see that patients are 20% stronger on average after doing this 10 minute stimulation. They are able to get into a squat 40% deeper comfortably, and they have a third less pain on average. So without the use of pharmaceutical options uh, like opioids, they're able to reduce their pain. And all of these benefits we've found last for hours after treatment, sometimes the pain relief will even last into the next day for patients. So we look at it as a supplement to physical activity that if it can be done on a daily basis, that's great. Um, but in a traditional therapy environment, it's uh, you know two to three times a week is the typical uh, period of time that patients can use this. So we're now able to, with our second generation product, we're able to measure people's strength and range of motion right on the device. And we're able to then show them how much their strength and range of motion have improved immediately after the treatment has ended. So it's a nice feature so we can track patients over time. And what's great about it is that it's something that's very simple and intuitive to use so that it doesn't require a patient to have a lot of physical capacity. In fact, they could have no physical capacity and they could still use it. Or if the patient is not really a patient, but maybe they're an athlete, they can use it for sports performance enhancement. So we're really focused on the needs of those that, that are unable to do physical activity on their own. And um, definitely, uh, you know, what Rocky Knoll has done for me is really made me aware that patients with dementia, people living with dementia, really, really struggle with the physical activity component from a lack of being able to follow instructions to just being less mobile. It's, it's difficult to get exercise. And that was part of the prompting for some of the collaborative work that we've done with Rocky Knoll. Before I pass it on over to the gals, I want to ask you, you had mentioned, you know, the use of your legs. Is it focused just on leg strength or is this something that can be utilized for back pain and in all the other areas that hurt and <laughs> get weak. Right, that's a great question. So uh, we do find that um, low back pain is alleviated with our product. Um, I've even had people with pain up into their neck where we've been able to recline the seat and we've been able to alleviate that pain. I've had personal experience after bashing my thumb and having it throb of then doing bench presses against this plate and the throbbing and pain disappeared. I've even had headache pain disappear from this. Uh, I even was able to intervene with a migraine and the nausea associated with that just from a single treatment and no more headache. So pain relief is absolutely incredible with this. I have been having some um, clients come into our office with all sorts of different needs. Uh, we have a relationship with uh, Tender Heart Senior Care um, here in Sheboygan, where their clients are coming in to see us as part of the therapy services that are being offered through Tender Hearts. Well, one of those clients 
um, has shoulder pain. And so I developed kind of a strap mechanism that can attach to the foot plate so that we can deliver those vibrations through to our arm. And I envision a lot of um, additional accessories and options that we can use to really target the vibration delivery to key areas of the body um, into the future. Wonderful, thank you. Um, I'm gonna go over uh, and first uh, talk to uh, Kayla and ask, you know, how, how did you get involved? I I'm, uh, would imagine Jeff approached you, but how much convincing did it take for you to get on board and then figure out, okay, now how the heck are we gonna pay for this whole thing and, and get this ball rolling? Well, Rocky Knoll purchased the Vibe Tech in July of 2016. Um, so I was not here at the time, um, but we were able to purchase the Vibe Tech machine through um, our healthcare foundation. We have a very um, supportive group of county board supervisors that really believe in the Vibe Tech and what it could offer to the residents here at Rocky Knoll. And initially, when we first got that Vibe Tech, we were looking at um, really focusing on, on strength. Um, so the patients and the, res the residents at Rocky Knoll that first used the Vibe Tech um, often had generalized weakness, um, possibly Parkinson's, dementia, pneumonia, and aphid. And so um, Rocky Knoll, in partnership with our therapy, our contracted therapy company, MJ Care, they tracked and monitored the results um, when the Vibe Tech first came to, to Rocky Knoll. Because of some of the contraindications from the Vibe Tech, we weren't able to explore as many ortho patients as we would have liked. So the decision was made in March of 2018 then to move the Vibe Tech to our dementia unit. Um, we have five units here at Rocky Knoll. We're a 149 bed facility, and we have um, a pretty good population of, of residents with dementia. So that decision was was made knowing that we wanted to to steer the focus from the short term rehab and pain management to um, looking at our dementia residents and seeing if they could help in specific areas um, like strength and pain. And so when we brought the Vibe Tech over to our dementia unit, we focused on the prevention of falls. So um, I, I came in um, after we already had the Vibe Tech, but after meeting with Jeff and seeing um, some of the possibilities and initiating performance improvement plans to see how the Vibe Tech could help some of our residents, it was, it was pretty easy and the outcome spoke for themselves. Right. Thank you. Deb, how are you dealing with this currently? You know, what's your standard of care for physical well-being, like exercise and activities with, with people in your memory care communities? And, and what kinds of results have you been seeing? Well, I've always been a strong supporter of any kind of exercise. We all know that even at a young age, you know, our doctors are saying you have to keep active and, and be out there and doing things just to keep our, our weight and our blood pressure and cholesterol and all of that down. And that doesn't change as you get older. So, you know, through the years I have done various programs. A couple of years ago, I worked with the, um, the nursing staff and we did a spring into action type program and all the units where we would every morning get together for 15, 20 minutes and do range of motion or various types of exercises along with that. We also have a music therapist in-house who does a lot of music and movement type programs. We've done some Tai Chi and we actually have a lady coming in that's maybe going to start a Tai Chi class. So exercise is important at any age, no matter what ability you have. So Deb, can you tell me what difference have you seen in your your dementia residents since introducing Vibe Tech? Have you noticed that they're stronger, less likely to fall? What, what have you seen? So we've kept track of, you know, we have a pretty small department, so we've been and trying to do like six people a quarter and get them on two or three times a week. We've had one lady that we did this with regularly, and uh, we found that we were, weren't sure how it necessarily improved her um, mobility or her weight bearing, but it, it significantly seemed to improve her mood. I think it gave her the hope that she could improve and get better and possibly maybe even go home. So I think from that standpoint, it, it was a, a, a really um, uplifting exercise for her. We had another gentleman who he actually 
had one leg amputated, so we only did it with one leg. Um, and he had numerous diagnoses, including diabetes and Alzheimer's disease. However, he was pretty high functioning. He immediately after the first time on the machine told us how he had such more feeling in his legs. So I saw a big change in the feeling in his legs and in his fingers. And I've had several of the people that have used the machine say the same thing, that it just they, their legs felt lighter. They had feeling farther up their legs, even one person all the way up to their hips. So, you know, it, it you, we might be focusing on that dementia type resident, but I see it being successful in other avenues also. Well, that makes sense. And I was just thinking when you were talking about the, the change in the, in the woman's mood, because so often a lot of times people with dementia can't tell us they're in pain. But I know I get a little crankier (laughs) when I've got pain and I'm not as comfortable. And when that's alleviated, you know, I'm sure it affects my mood. And so I, one, I wonder if that has anything, you know, to do with that. And then Jeff, I wanted to ask you, does it stimulate blood flow at all? Yes. So uh, we've done just a little bit of testing so far um, on blood flow. And uh, we saw blood flow um, in the, uh, the guinea pig person who was the chair of the physical therapy department uh, at UW La Crosse. So we saw his blood flow increase threefold uh, while he was doing leg press movements on the equipment. When the equipment was just going on its own without him putting forth the effort and without the foot plate moving, but just staying stationary with the vibration, his blood flow double. So I'd like to do more research along those lines to see how long does that blood flow stay elevated. And with the passive range of motion with the foot plate moving, um, will that increase the blood flow more than just the plate staying stationary and vibrating? Uh, because those vibrations are actually causing muscles to contract. So when you've got your calf muscles contracting, they squeeze the blood and cause that to flow. So the lymph fluid as well as the blood um, are circulating um, better uh, due to the treatment. Uh, We've even got some uh, planned studies in the area of wound healing, in particularly um, with patients with chronic wounds that are non-healing wounds. So these would be wounds that you might see in somebody uh, that's in bed rest that might have diabetic neuropathy. So we've got a handful of different areas to dive into, um, not just with, uh, with individuals with dementia, but Um, We're also seeing some nice improvements in Parkinson's patients with their range of motion um, and improved balance and walking speed. Um, So a lot of different areas that are really um, not being well addressed by current technologies are things that we're actually able to do some things with. Now, getting back to the the comment on elevated mood, um, you know, that that is an interesting thing. Um, You know, when I mentioned um, to... Uh, some of the therapists at the Ovation Jewish Home in Milwaukee uh, about Rocky Noel doing work with dementia patients, um, they said, well, anytime that we have a patient that is agitated or is refusing to come to their therapy department where our equipment's located, they'll ask them, oh, would you like to try Vibe Tech? You know, just sit in the Vibe Tech chair for a little bit. And they all say, sure. So they go to therapy, sit in our chair for 10 minutes, and every single one of them has been able to then continue and do all of the rest of their therapy. So there might be you know, 45 minutes to an hour worth of therapy that they're getting that they, that patient otherwise would have missed out on. So for the patient, that's incredible because that's just going to uh, you know, accelerate their recovery. Uh, for the facility, it's helpful because, yeah, that's revenue that they wouldn't have been able to capture from Medicare or insurance without having that mood boosted. Now, I've actually done some pilot studies where um, I've hooked people up to one of the components of the lie detector detector test. And so it's uh, the galvanic skin response or skin conductance test. And I use that to actually develop our technology um, so that we didn't if we did rapid loading, you could actually stress somebody out. So we have everything happen in a slow and controlled manner. 
so that it's as soothing as possible. But during treatment, patients will actually, you know, you can watch their stress level just drop in real time. And at the end of treatment, it'll come back, but not nearly as high as where it was to start. Um, so it's really nice to be able to have some of those tools to evaluate uh, what's really happening right there in real time in front of you. Wow, that's incredible. I was thinking, you know, when you mentioned the diabetes and the neuropathy, uh, that is just such a massive need. You're, I mean, you're hearing more and more people dealing with that on, on so many levels or the, the wound healing to be able to speed that up. And when you were talking about the blood flow and, you know, the, the lymph symptom being able to work better and push things through, you know, to cleanse the body, it's just, I mean, it, it all makes great, great sense. And I think of just, you know, even the, the massage chairs that are out there, you know, if you go get a pedicure or something, and that, I mean, everyone always just feels better, just shake it a little bit, you know, and just just relaxing. And I know that that's not near to what you're doing, but I think we forget about those little things and how important they are to us. I'm going to throw a question back to the gals here, because one of the, the questions that I think people will have is how easy is it for patients to get get on the Vibe Tech? And is there any resistance to that? And um, Deb, it sounds like you're the one kind of implementing that. So if you don't mind taking that question. Sure. If they're ambulatory, it's really quite simple. It's just like walking and sitting in any other chair. We, we have several people that um, will walk up to it in a walker or whatever. We have a few people that will need a little assist with a transfer. We have looked at, and we haven't actually attempted this yet, but the chair totally swivels 360 degrees. So you can swivel it to the point where you could put someone in with a, a lift of sorts. So getting in and out of the chair is really not difficult at all. Okay. Great. I'm going to go ahead and pull Jeff in because he is at the chair at the moment. So um, Jeff, I'm going to have you talk so that we can actually hear you um, explain and maybe you can you can get in and out of the chair so you can tell us what you're doing as you're doing it. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, this is the second generation of equipment here. So we're able to swivel it, swivel it all the way around and um, get a patient right on in and swivel into this. And we can log right into the system. Uh, we do our range of motion test first, where right now I'm pulling the foot plate closer to me. And I'm going to stop shy of what I'm capable of. Um, but what we're looking for is a user's comfortable range of motion. So how far can their legs come up um, with this passive, essentially a passive squat test, that you're getting somebody into a squat-like position, measuring how far they can go, but you don't have to worry about how are you going to get them out of the squat. Um, so it is a, a pretty decent measure, um, and it's something that we can immediately see gains right after treatment. Um, so as I mentioned, there are 40% gains on average um, that people have in their range of motion. Um, so right now the machine is evaluating my leg weight. That's important so it knows how hard to push the foot plate um, if it's working completely passively. And then I go on and I do a strength test. And so I can push with one leg, the other leg, or both legs, um, depending on what I'm looking um, for. So I can see what my strength was. Then um, from there, we actually will select the treatment. So we have the ability to um, do a passive treatment, we can do an active leg press treatment, and we're also developing some additional games um, for this. Well, I'm going to zoom in so you can actually see the foot plate movement. So right now my legs are being vibrated and the foot plate's moving back and forth on its own. So this is a passive treatment and the foot plate just will keep going back and forth. It's very comfortable. So similar to what you're saying with the massage, but this is better than the normal massage because we've really honed in on the frequency and the directional um, component of those vibrations. So we can make this very, very therapeutic. And if I wanted to, I can even lay back and recline 
and take a nap. <laughs> it's a, a pretty simple thing to do. So um, again, very, very easy for a patient to be able to get in here and use. No, I see that the arms lift up. Do they lift up on both sides? And they do. They do. So yeah, very, very easy um, to get in and out. Um, complete adjustability. We can fit um, the fifth percentile U.S. four-year-old girl in here, and we can also fit um, full-grown adults. So it's. Uh, you know, we have no problem getting people to fit within the system. Okay, but I was I was thinking of basketball players or football players that are a little bit bigger and and stuff on on how that would work. But it sounds like you've got that all figured out. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, down the road we'll have a a sports version that would be really for some of those uh, elite athletes. That um, you know we right now we limit it to 300 pounds of pressure, but um, we could you know, modify this to be able to really keep up with any athlete out there, uh, really from that sports performance edge that we're trying to give people, um, or for recovery from a sports injury. And if we can shave even a day off of somebody's recovery time, and I know that's possible, we can save a sports team, you know, maybe thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. So some of these athletes are paid very well. Um, you know, for instance, uh, when I ruptured my Achilles, the day that the orthopedic surgeon reattached it, I was already using the equipment to prevent atrophy. Six weeks is the typical time that they say it takes before you're ready to get back into um, physical therapy after an injury like that. Well, I knew a lot of atrophy would take place, so I said, I really want to prevent that. So when I went in for my first therapy appointment, the therapist took the boot off, and he jumped back, he's like, wow, I expected to see a lot more atrophy than that. What have you been doing? Uh, so when I told him, he's like, give me your card. <laughs> so, uh, and the orthopedic surgeon at um, two months gave me the go ahead to get back into martial arts, which originally he, would, he had said that that would be at least 12 months before getting back into. So that was a six times quicker recovery than what he anticipated. So from a prevention of falls, preventions of injuries, to the treatment of injuries and surgeries, uh, this is something that can, uh, can really work for everybody. Wow, it's, it's amazing. Now, one of the things I wanted to ask you, when you're sitting in the, in the chair and the machine is doing the work, does it go past your comfort zone that it measured you for? No, so it, it keeps the treatment. So it sets the maximum range as where you're comfortable. So it'll never exceed your comfort limits. And when you do your strength test, let's go on the low end, for example, where somebody can't follow instructions. Well, um, they can't push any harder because they don't quite understand what you're trying to get them to do. It'll just measure their leg weight, and that will be the input the machine has. Now, if the per or a person is strong and uh, they're pushing really hard, the resistance the machine will supply during you know, a procedure that requires voluntary exertion, they're going to be working hard. You can actually get somebody to be pretty, pretty tired. You can feel those muscles really working um, from this. The vibration intensity is also scaled to that um, user's strength. So the lower the strength, the lower the vibration intensity, which directly results in smaller muscle contractions. The muscles contract more forcefully with a higher intensity vibration. So we've done the homework to figure out which frequency um, works best. And um, it's, you know, even within the window that um, that natural stretch reflex we have of frequencies that work, um, we found the frequency that really works the, the muscles the most from that involuntary contraction standpoint. Well, and it sounds like to me for um, someone who is exercising, trying to build strength, in a lot of ways, there's probably less likelihood of getting hurt, doing something wrong by using this machine. And there's a better recovery time as well because it's more controlled and consistent. That dosing control is absolutely key. So, you know, that was um, after figuring out that this was an effective stimulus, I wanted to make sure we ensured it was a safe stimulus. 
Uh, so I started adding clinical advisors to our team to make sure that the bones, the muscles, the nerves were all going to be safe. We continue to do evaluations. You know, this from an orthopedic standpoint, the amount of strain put on the body is owned by the vibrations is really only about one hundredth of the level of the strain put on the bones by walking. So it's such a low magnitude that you know I. You know, personally have used it to mend a fractured wrist, sprained ankle, the Achilles tear, you know, the <laughs> damaged thumb, um, and you name it, uh, you know, I, I will find a way to use this. So uh, I'm not going out seeking ways to, uh, to hurt myself, but you know what, I've got the tools to fix myself, so it makes me maybe go out and try more things than I would otherwise. Yeah, it sounds like you're using yourself as a guinea pig there, and maybe <laughs> maybe got to be a, list, a little more cautious there. <laughs> Caleb, um, I want to throw this one back over to you. So looking forward to, to your organization, how do you look at taking the study of the impact on memory loss patients to the next level. It just seems absolutely fantastic in terms of the demands on intervention for falls and, and so many other things with, with memory care. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. A lot of the information that we've gathered is, is a really small sample size. So I think going forward, we're just looking, we're looking forward to being able to have more residents use the Vibe Tech and see the different areas where they're going to benefit it is, is personalized. So so um, when we're looking at someone, there could be other issues unrelated to dementia that, I mean, we talked about the mood and we talked about pain and just the sensory. So I think taking it to the next step for us is, is looking to expand the use of the Vibe Tech, which um, there's education that's involved in getting more of um, our staff trained to use it. Um, I also see it, an opportunity where we can get family members involved. And we had one family that was um, willing to get trained to use the Vibe Tech. And so um, instead of having to rely on our life enrichment department to come and have the, that individual get on the Vibe Tech, the family was then trained. So I think it's, it's really looking at what could be the, the benefits and um, what can we offer? Like when we're, we're talking about the Vibe Tech, we're looking at the whole person, we're looking at their individualized plan of care, and we're really using all the different opportunities with the Vibe Tech to, to meet their specific needs. Thank you for that. Deb, do you have anything that you want to add in terms of what you're seeing or what you'd like to see? I think um, over the years, the whole focus of, of nursing homes has changed to what we now call um, person-centered care. So we're looking at how we can meet every person's need instead of a group of people. And I think the Vibe Tech is a good example where you're looking at one person and what their needs are and how it can benefit that person. And I think that's the, the whole um, fundamental focus of what we're looking to do is use those new innovative techniques that the world is evolving, it's technology. And that's what we have to be willing to look at and use and change and hopefully make some success stories out of our nursing home folks. Would you too recommend um, other, uh, other nursing homes or assisted livings getting involved in memory care, getting involved with the Vibe Tech therapy? I, I would recommend it. I, I think it's a, a wonderful machine. I think our biggest challenge right now is having enough time to get as many people, individual people on as we would like. So that's probably our biggest challenge. Kayla, how about you? Yeah, I, I agree with what Deb said. I think you have to look at, at your population and, and see if the Vibe Tech is going to be a good fit. I think really optimizing volunteers and the more people that learn about the Vibe Tech and the technology and believe in it will make it a lot easier. Um, but I definitely think that assisted living, skilled nursing, there's, there's definitely opportunities for, for everyone to, to utilize this technology, and it's incredibly innovative. It appears to be. And um, one question I wanted to ask you, Deb, have you ever done uh, the Vibe Tech in cahoots with maybe headsets and music? Because that's such a big po popular thing. And I, I could almost see um, maybe some additional benefits combining the two. Well, actually, Jeff and I have talked to 
about that. And uh, Jeff is working with UW Madison. I think several different um, possibilities with his newer um, machines. One of them maybe incorporating music. One possibly in incorporating some kind of almost like a video game type system where you know you're you're meeting challenges and then you get a rest break and then you do another challenge. So um, yeah, we actually um, have a huge iPod program. I'm sure you've heard of Music and Memory, which we actually started here at Rocky Knoll in Wisconsin, and um, have had great results with that program. And I do believe that using music with this machine could we we've actually used our iPods with when we've had some of our residents on the machine. Some like it, some don't. But yeah, I think that would be a huge benefit. Jeff, I'm going to pull you back in here, and can you speak a little bit more to that, or or is that an undercover situation there with no. the music and the video? I always like to let people know about those challenges, those um, activities that we're up to, just because others might be able to weigh in. And, uh, you know, absolutely, I'm open to folks reaching out, uh, the viewing audience here, the listening audience. That I, I love working with people with innovative ideas and concepts. Um, so, yeah, we are, um, one of our efforts is to actually really focus on the user engagement piece and making sure that we can engage a user during the treatment process. Um, this this game that Deb was talking about, uh, we had a, a team from UW-Madison, uh, actually some students, um, that uh, we tasked with uh, coming up with a video game that they could play on the equipment that would be fun for them to play, but that would be intuitive enough for a person with dementia to get them to voluntarily push and exert themselves. And um, and I, I loved, um, you know, Deb quickly jumped in and said, hey, well, what about throwing in like a prize for them and a, or a reward once they've gone so far and worked themselves out so well to be able to listen to the music that they you know, love to listen to back in the day or you know, even a peaceful, relaxing scene. Um, and so we've got lots of different ideas along that um, front. And I mean, the, when you look at a rehabilitation system as a video game that's potentially interactive between multiple facilities, I mean, this is a connected device. We can do telemedicine with this device. I've had one of these uh, um, just for demo purposes at somebody's house, and I was able to log into the machine and do remote treatments. So imagine people doing leg press wars from different facilities or you know, some, some sort of a cognitive and physical challenge and um, being able to go up against one another. I, it's it's so fantastic to uh, recognize there are tons of opportunities out there. And if we can find ways to work with developers, uh, um, people with just creative minds or great ideas, um, I'm absolutely on board with uh, um, embracing those ideas and seeing how we can get those ideas out to facilities like Rocky Knoll, where we can really use it to benefit the patients. And you know, I am dedicated to trying to get our second generation product to Rocky Knoll um, in order to really expand their efforts with uh, the, um, the dementia patients and the falls reduction and any other work that we can do. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to work within our community and our, our system and our network to really make that happen. So I'd love to see that program expand. I'd love to see uh, the patients, um, to see all 29 of the patients using the equipment on a you know, five days a week basis. If, uh, if we could provide them with the support staff to do it, if we can provide them with uh, whatever resources and training we can. And also, I'm not afraid to talk to the policymakers to find a way to get funding for facilities like Rocky Knoll to put towards caring for patients with dementia in the best way possible. And right now, the funding is not there to really drive that. So if we can create that funding mechanism to make that happen, I will do everything in my power to make that happen. Well, that's wonderful. I was wondering, uh, some of our listeners are, are probably curious about pricing. Is that something that you're comfortable sharing on this, or would you rather have them contact you individually? Well, we, we're working on various options with that, so they can certainly reach out. Um, but, you know, the um, 
option that we have that's uh, more like a subscription plan, I think is going to be a great way to uh, prevent the need to have a big capital purchase. I mean, this is high-end robotic rehabilitation equipment with lots of controllers and sensors and things inside. But in order to make it affordable, the uh, you know the subscription model I think is going to be a way where a facility can generate revenue on it from the rehab side of things. And down the road, if we're able to change policies and payment mechanisms to make that work, um, I'd love to see some way for a facility to get reimbursed for that. Maybe it's community support and donors that are helping out with uh, with that end of it. Um, but we've found a way to make that work within our financial model. And we are you know, a very research-minded um, business. We're really you know, trying to work with those thought leaders um, in the research space um, to really grow a full industry around therapeutic vibration because of all of the potential that it has. So, so I think that that subscription model is going to be a good way um, for us to move forward with, with folks. So absolutely, I, I'd love to, to chat with folks about what we can do to uh, to outfit them with our equipment. Great. I'm going to go back to the gals here again. And um, I, I'm interested, uh, Kayla, have you guys ever looked into, and maybe you're already leveraging this, but I'm just thinking nursing students or um, somebody who's looking maybe for some extra credits or, you know, while they're going to school just to, to get some background, you know, that'll look good on their resume. Um, you had mentioned, you know, one family was trained on how to use this. Is that is that something that you would consider, or maybe it's not even feasible? Maybe there's not a school close to you. <laughs> I don't know. No, that's a great question. It's certainly an opportunity for us. Um, I know Jeff has been working with the University of Wisconsin La Crosse in their therapy department. I, I guess it kind of depends um, the different the different people that we're looking to to target. We obviously want. Um, future therapists to be aware of this technology and to see how vibe tech can be used within physical therapy. Um, but there is tremendous opportunity to get the nursing students involved. And um, at Rocky Knoll, we have um, the wonderful opportunity to be a clinical site for our local technical college. So we do have nursing students that are, are doing their clinicals as well as certified nursing assistants um, doing their clinicals here. So that is definitely an opportunity that we can um, share the, the vibe tech and, and get them trained. Um, usually they have kind of their own curriculum, so um, we would definitely need to, to work with them as far as incorporating that into the curriculum, but um, they do get some, some good exposure when they're here and there's time to be with the residents and the patients, so um, that's definitely something that we, we should look into as we look to, to spread and to educate people on the vibe tech. Yeah, I'm even thinking with uh, people in their master's program, specific, you know, with elder care, might be really interested in doing a research paper and being part of the whole process there. I, I know I've had a few people reach out to me and what I'm doing, and, and I just think that that's a wonderful, you know, no-cost route to be able to go and helps everybody everybody kind of move through the through the process there. Jeff, I'm going to come back to you. I wanted to uh, just ask you in wrapping up if there's anything that we haven't covered that um, that you, other than we need to give your contact information out, which is all listed on the site, but we'll highlight that again before we wrap up. But any Well, you've done a fantastic job, so thank you again for this opportunity. Um, yeah, what, right now we are really... Um, in this uh, in this stage where we're looking to try and scale our business and um, try and really make some things happen, we're still you know an early stage um, you know Sheboygan, Wisconsin based um, NASA spinoff company. So um, we're trying to really get the word out about what we have. And there's no other technology that can in 10 minutes increase strength by 20 percent, that can reduce pain by a third and have these effects last. Um, you know, the, the opioid crisis is the one thing that I think that we didn't really address here, but certainly uh, when people go to therapy, um, oftentimes beforehand, they'll be given um, some painkillers to help them endure, you know, and so it, it helps them get through the range of motion and it helps them be able to tolerate being on their feet or pushing themselves a little bit. But if we can negate the need for opiates to be used in rehab, if we can use this as a means for preventing pain, I, I think that we can do a whole lot to kind of shift this 
opioid um, overuse issue um, that's just blanketed the globe. And I, I think that we can actually use VibeTech as just one means of intervening. I know physical therapy in general is being touted by the National Institutes of Health as being a, an effective solution for pain relief. But from what we've seen, uh, you know, just the pain relief from using our equipment, even for a few moments, um, it's very significant. So, so I think that's something that we'll be able to make a big dent with right there. I think that that's really interesting. And I, I remember by my house, there was a methadone clinic and people were in and out, in and out. And it's like, how cool to have a Vibe Tech clinic where you come in, you get your treatment for 10 minutes, and you know everybody's on their way and a lot safer um, in their lives um, and moving through in a different avenue. I think that would be like an amazing pilot program to be to be pushed after, especially in this day and age and the cost. The other thing that comes to mind is is just our vet coming back with injuries and in pain and post traumatic stress. All of that I think would be a, a fabulous study as well and. Uh, you know, you look at how huge these clinics are and, um, you know, any help we can give our vets, I think, would be would be absolutely fabulous, too. Absolutely. So, Deb and, and Kayla, anything that you guys would like to add in wrapping up? It's been fun, you know, seeing the progress that we've made. And Thank you. Kayla, anything else? Nope. Okay. Well, I really appreciate your time today. Um, audience, if you're interested, um, you know, please, please, you know, like and click and share on this because I think this is, this is cutting edge stuff and this is information. Um, they need help. We all need help getting this, this stuff out into the world. And we all have connections that we don't even know exist. You know, people are part of our spheres and, and this just might um, hit somebody where maybe they want to make a, a sizable do donation or even a small one just to help help move this along and they can go to uh, vibetechglobal.com vibetechglobal.com or you can email jeff at jeff at vibetechglobal their phone number is 920-453-0138 uh, that's 920 920- Four five three zero one three eight, and then they are on Facebook and Twitter, um, YouTube, LinkedIn, and um, you can find their address and, and information. All these links are are on our radio page and on the YouTube page and on the blog. So um, again, please please share this information. And again, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jeff Lismer. And then we also have with us Deb Jacoby and Kayla Clinton. So thank you all. And uh, in, in your um, weeks ahead, you know, feel free to go to alzheimerspeaks.com to find out more information regarding dementia and how to give care. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, this is Meredith from the Senior Fitness with Meredith podcast, where I discuss all things for seniors. From fitness, your health and wellness journeys, how to be all over strong and beyond. I also have my mini podcast called Motivation with Meredith. It's a great, quick, motivational pick-me-up for your days. Join me, listen now, search for Senior Fitness with Meredith on your favorite podcast platform.